What's up everybody and welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Well members get exclusive content. Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you'll receive a notification every time that I drop a video and you can go and check the video out. Leave a comment, leave a like. If you support me, support the content, support the Go Up movement, let's get into it. This story takes us once again to the Los Angeles County Jail, replete, suffused with violence and torture even. Here in 2015, I just gotten out of high power. And so they put me on the 3,000th floor just temporarily. In the one-man cell, so it had to be 31, 3,200 or something. And... The homie from Grape Street was there in the module with me. And he, he and I uh, ended up becoming pretty close. As I alluded to before, I ended up finding out some very unsavory uh, uh, stuff about this dude from Grape Street. Uh, he was committing acts there in the Los Angeles County Jail that was unsavory and unbecoming of a gangster. And in fact, right there in the module is where he began some of his misdeeds. I did not know any of this at the time. He and I used to smoke together. He had got a couple of packages in, and he was looking out for me. So we were cool. And um, I naturally was running the module <clears throat> immediately. And... I used to look out for him with certain stuff, getting popped out of his cell and all this sort of stuff to get his hair braided, etc. Go hang out in the day room and all that. He was hanging out with a light-skinned dude from up north with an afro, a young light-skinned dude, some little young pretty boy. And the young pretty boy used to be in his cell all of the time. And this is where some of the unsavory stuff Begin to happen. I may get into that one day. I don't know. But at this time, Grape Street and I, we're cool. We're becoming pretty close. And so, when he got into it with this dude, I had his back. He ended up getting into it with a dude. I don't even remember where the dude was from. I don't know if he was from Fresno, Vallejo, i.e. I do not recall. But he's the reason that I got K Ford. Uh, when I told you that I went to the hole and I was in there with Porky, uh, under similar circumstances, this was the situation that I was referring to where a K Ford is a, a keep away. The K essentially stands for keep away. And four means that you have to stay on the 4,000 floor. They have K3s, so they keep away on the 3,000 floor. So your crime me or your enemy, someone you committed violence against, what have you, if they're on the 5,000 floor, they're going to have a K3 on your wristband, have you as a keep away from that person on the five, that's on the 5,000 floor. Whomever it is that they do not want you to get to, they're going to have you a keep away from that person. And so I ended up being a keep away from this person. But again, I don't re recall where he was from. But he was light brown skin, and he too had an afro, a younger dude. And he was okay, but some of his ways used to rub me the wrong way. And I had to tell him a couple times, bro, you're not, you're not out where you're from. you in L.A. This is the Los Angeles County Jail. You'll get fucked up in here. For real. You know, but oh, ain't nobody picking on you or anything because of where you're from. But you got to follow the rules and protocols like everyone else, regardless. But sometimes he like to flout the protocols. Well, one day he was over there in his cell, and he was a couple of cells down from Grape Street. And he was rapping. And rapping rather loudly, and it was late. Apparently, Grape Street had court the next morning. And you can hear Gray Street yelling out on the chair, telling the dude to be quiet, to quiet down some. At first, he was respectful, telling him, could you quiet down some, bro? People got caught. This is not a late night. We have so-called late nights there in the Los Angeles County Jail, typically on Friday and Saturday night. 
where the tears booming all night. People are rapping, yelling, talking all night because there's no court the next morning if it's Friday night. If it's Saturday night, there's no court the next morning. So it's a so-called late night. But on the nights when people have court the next day, such as Sunday night, you have court Monday morning, Monday night, you have court Tuesday morning, etc. People tend to show some semblance of respect and keep the tear somewhat quiet for those who are trying to get rest to get up and go and fight these demons and devils the next morning inside of these torture chambers and also, also known as courtrooms around America. Grape Street was clearly becoming annoyed and became more aggressive in his approach, telling the dude now to shut the fuck up. He did utter those words. Dude then told him to shut the fuck up. Now, Grape Street, he walked around oftentimes like he was real tough. And come to find out, he wasn't all that tough. But he walked around, he had tattoos everywhere. He had a little size on him. He had a couple of fights with a couple of his enemigos. And so he thought that he was owned like that. But he really was. But he was a cool dude and he was cool with me. And I didn't want to yell out on the tear and tell him, man, just chill out. Again, I don't like getting involved when grown men start having spats in situations. I typically... Let them iron it out. They are the ones that are involved in it. They got themselves involved in it with one another. They can iron it out. The next day I did holler at Grape Street down there on the tier when they popped my cell. I told him, what's the deal? He like, man, this dude tripping. You know, uh, I, I had to go to court today. I told him to quiet down. I told him to shut the fuck up and he told me to shut the fuck up. That's a problem, big homie. Like, yeah, I understand. So when they come out on the tier, Grape Street grabbed the dude by his shirt and shook him up against the wall, basically, and told him, bro, if I got to get at you one more time, you know what I'm saying, whoa, whoa, I'm going to smash you, bro. I don't know where you think you at. You know what I'm saying? I got at you respectfully at first and told you to quiet down with all of the rapping. Then I had court the next day. I'm fighting a lot of time. You thinking that it's a game. You want to continue on. And then when I get more aggressive, you want to get at me and tell me to shut up, bro, I should break your jaw right now. Now, the dude, he looks pretty shook up. He's up against the wall, and he basically has his hands up against the wall. His arms up against the wall, he's not doing anything. He hasn't grabbed Great Street back. He hasn't choked. He, Great Street basically has him by the neck. At one point, he put his hand around his neck. And dude is not responding properly. So I'm thinking, okay. Uh, this is not going to end well for him because you have to fight back and you have to defend yourself. They're in jail, they're in prison, and those sort of situations. Again, the best remedy to end, my brothers, is to stay the hell out of there because if you're not really built like that, you can't end up prey. You can't end up food somebody's dinner. Stay free, people. And dude, he clearly wasn't built like that, at least so it appeared at first. And I thought Grape Street was the one that was built like that. By the way he was putting on, what I come to learn, was an act. Well, they go back to their cells, and later on that night, to be defiant and prove that he was unafraid of Grape Street and anyone else on the tier, the dude, well, he began to rap again, loudly. Now, Grape Street didn't have court again the next day, but others did. And it's just that he's making a mockery of Grape Street, clearly. Everyone on the tier knows it. Because now, he's rapping louder than he was rapping the day before. The man won't shut the fuck up. He's even beginning to annoy me, because now it's three in the morning, and he's still going. But it's all to piss off Grape Street. And everyone on the, on the tier knows it. Because everyone had heard the commotion and the spat that they had just the day before. I'm thinking, okay, 
Grape Street is putting on this sort of front like he's big and tough, certainly he's going to take off on this dude tomorrow. I knew he was. And lo and behold, when they cracked the damn cell doors open and we came out, Grape Street, he launched at him immediately. He didn't say a word. He attacked him. He went right at him and swung hard, a Hail Mary. But he missed. And when he missed, dude hit him with an uppercut, bam, and dropped Grape Street on his pockets. He did. I said, what the, what in the, man, this dude had been putting on this show in this front for some time. Had me fooled. And I thought that the other dude was the one that was scary and and would be shook up because not just by looking at him, I wasn't judging him or because he wasn't from L.A., but what I'd just seen with my own two eyes just the day before when Gray Street had him by the neck up against the wall and he wasn't fighting back. But apparently, that was all the rules. He was unafraid because he went right back to his cell and began rapping again, proving that he was not scared for one. And then when he came out and Gray Street launched at him and tried to attack him, he didn't run. He ducked, got out the way. Gray Street threw a fake ass uh, a, a swim banger, a Michael Phelps Hail Mary. Ducked his head down and swung some old nonsense. And it didn't connect. He missed. And when he missed, dude hit him with a left uppercut. Bam! And dropped him. I said, what in God's name is going on here? And Gray Street, well, he was down on the damn ground. Belly up. On his back. And, and that dude was on top of him. And had his hand around his damn neck. Trying to return the favor to Great Street and choke him the way that Great Street had just choked him the day before. Apparently, it was a plan the whole time to exact his revenge. And when he had Great Street down on the ground and was choking him, Great Street looked up at me with some old weird googly eyes. As if to say, big homie, are you going to help me? And I feel sorry for him. I did. Because we had been kicking it every day in the module. And instinctively, I socked the dude that was on top of him. I did. And then I grabbed him by the shirt and I kicked him once or twice. I regret that. I didn't want to kick the brother. But I, I sort of blacked out myself. I was sort of out of it myself at that time. All I saw was a comrade of mine, someone who I thought was a comrade, my brethren, down there on the ground. Someone who I've been kicking it with every day. And how can I stay, stand right here and watch him get beat up like this and do nothing? So really, I was just trying to get the dude off of him at first. I just grabbed him by the shirt and I was trying to pull him off of him. But he wouldn't come and he wouldn't stop. He still had Gray Street by the neck. I'm thinking, damn, this dude might lose air. So I did hit him with my right hand. Bam. And he still didn't stop. I ain't want to hit him too much harder. So I just kicked him a couple of times in the side. I ain't kicked him in the face. And then he, he released Grave Street, and I put him off of him. And really, that was that. Because when the dude got up, and Grave Street got up, Grave Street was just, he just started, he had his shirt off already. He just started walking back and forth on the tier, huffing and puffing. Dude, man, like he just whooped his ass or something. Bro, he just hit you with an uppercut and had you down there barely up. You didn't win. And then I had to jump in and help your ass. And then I went to court. One, uh, like a couple days later, when I came back from court, they cuffed me up. And that's when they took me to the hole. They had went and saw it on video. At that time, they didn't see it. I, I don't know. I don't know if dude snitched or what. So they made me a K-4, uh, uh, you know, and put me on another floor at, as a keep away away from him because he was a victim. 
or whatever. Uh, but that's what happened, man. I was trying to help the dude out. I, I, I'm not proud of the fact that I kicked the brother, though. I'm really not. I, I wasn't happy about that afterwards, especially uh, because, you know, like I say, it was really Grape Street beef. And uh, I'm okay with letting two men work it out and squabble it out, and whoever wins, they just win. They, if you lose, you just lose, bro. It happens. Mike Tyson got knocked out. It happens. But since it's just that I was so connected with I was chilling with him. And I just couldn't stand to see him down there on the ground like that, really about to get pummeled upon. And dude had him by the neck. And as I said, he's looking up at me as if to say, man, help me, man. Help me, will you? Like, damn, man, I thought you was big and tough, man. Damn. I got to get involved in this bullshit. So I had to help the dude, man. That's all it was, brothers. I didn't want to jump on the other brother. It had nothing to do with him not being from L.A. and all of that. I don't care about that shit. He was black. He was good. But he had my comrade down there on the ground. And I had to do what I could to help protect him. It's just the way that I was taught. But as I said, come to find out, Grape Street had some illicit dealings there in the Los Angeles County Jail. He had some unsavory transactions between himself and another man. A tryst, if you will. Mm, it's true. And I'm sure one day I'm just going to have to bring you that damn story. It's a little bit sickening, though. Disgusting, even. But it happened. And, you know, if that brother is watching who I uh, kicked and socked about the face area over this dude. I apologize, brother. It, it was just business. I apologize. I'll be back with more. In the meantime, stay free, people!